So we now need to go back to the sky, that solid blue and make it look a little bit more interesting and maybe a little bit more sky looking. So I'm going to go to the view menu and choose fit art board in window and get a nice clear view of that. If you recall, that is stored in the sky layer. So we can click on the triangle, the toggle in there to expand that open. And that is rectangle it's at the top up there. And it has a padlock next to it because it is of course locked. Click on the padlock to unlock that item. And then you can hover over that uh, rectangle and left click to select it. Now, in order to create a gradient, we need to go up to the window menu and then go down the list to the gradient panel and left click. And that opens up on screen just here. And I will then move this just so we can see those options nice and clearly. Before we do any work with the gradient, we need to make sure we're applying it to the right attribute. And, and by attribute, what I mean is the fill or the stroke. So in this case, we need to apply it to the fill. And you'll need to make sure then that the fill symbol that we see here is in front of the stroke. So if I left click on the stroke and it's at the front and yours looks like this, that means that we're about to do something gradient wise, but apply it to the stroke. We don't want that. So you can hover over your fill icon, left click on it once that pops the front and now that's the active attribute to change. And then from here, well, you go up to the top left hand side and click on the gradient preview. And we see there we have this well, it looks like um, the heavens are about to open and we're going to get a big rainstorm um, because it looks like a very dreary looking sky. But this is actually Adobe's default gradient. Um, uh, so a gradient is a mixture of two or more colors that blend together smoothly. And in, in Adobe's case, it's white to black. And it's pretty much standard across all of the Adobe applications. Now, of course, we don't want to leave our sky looking like this. So we need to alter it. First of all, what we'll do is we will go to the angle value in the middle in here. Now, because we've got black and white, it's going to be fairly easy to see where the angle is of this gradient. I'm going to swipe over that. I'm going to type in 90 and press return. So now the idea is that we've got a color starting at the top that gradually fades or blends into a different color. And then once we've done that, you can go down to what's called the gradient bar in here, the gradient sliders. So, the color is defined by these things here, the dots. These are called color stops. And if you left click on one of them, it activates its options. And then you see that we have an opacity. So how, how transparent or how opaque is that color? Well, all the colors in a gradient start off with a solid. You can't see through them. And we're going to leave those for now, but it's set to a location of zero. So this gradient slider in here, it starts on the left hand side at zero and it works all the way across to 100 percent in there. That's why they're telling us that the location is at zero. Now we need to change the color. So hover your cursor over the color stop in there and double left click. And that takes us to one of many different uh, color options in there. We're going to create our own blue in here. Now you will be presented with this quite often because the white has come from a saved color in the swatches panel. All you get in here is the tint, a strength of a particular color. And it's actually using black, but with no strength to it. So it looks white. Confusing? I know. Now we don't want this. We want to create a color. So we don't want just the one slider. We need to go up to the top right hand side, change it from grayscale to CMYK. And so from here, then we can input our own values. I'll go to the cyan field and swipe over the zero in there. And I'll type in 46, hit the tab key to go down to the magenta field. And then I'll leave that set to zero hit the tab key once more and then to go down to the yellow field and type in four. And then again, down to the black field in there, which is going to be left set to zero in there. And we get this nice sort of pale blue color and we don't need to save that. All we have to do at this point then is now we set that color is to go across and hover over the, the black color stop on the far right hand side. And again, double left click on that. We get the same options again. So, it's actually the same swatch before it was a black, which is the K it was set to zero in our case. Now that's what it looked like before. And that's why it was white. But this in here is just set to black at full strength. Again, no good for us. We need to go to the top right hand side and we want the CMYK sliders in there. Now I'm just going to go to the black slider and just take that all the way back to zero because not only can you put the numbers in there by entering them, but you can experiment as well. So, you can just drag these sliders around. Notice as you drag the sliders that each of them are color coded 
So it will show you a preview of what you'll get if you drag the other sliders around in there. So I'm going to get this more kind of purpley color in there by dragging it to the right hand side. If I reduce the magenta, it's going to become more blue. So you can do that as well. And the sliders being color coded are really helpful. However, we have a prescribed color that we're going to use in here. So for the cyan, I'm going to set that to 80, hit the tab key. And then for the magenta, it's going to be 20. Uh, for the yellow, that's going to be left to zero. And then the black, that's going to be set to 20. And then in this case, you can hit the return key and it'll make that a slightly darker blue in this case. We don't need to save it, so we just come out of that dialog box. Now, that's not all you can do. We can influence how much of the lighter or the darker blue appears inside of the gradient and then in turn the object. So what we have at the moment is the dark blue uh, that's on the right hand side of our gradient slider with a location of 100% is at the top of our object. And the lighter blue on the left hand side of our gradient slider set to 0%. Well, that's all the way down at the bottom there where it starts. It's hidden behind the hill artwork. So if you wanted to have a slightly lighter blue sky, then you can drag the light blue color stop towards the right hand side. Notice the location increases in its value as we drag it closer and closer towards the right hand side. And it actually pushes that light blue further and further up the object. So now, pretty much two thirds of the gradient is occupied by the light blue. And then from the last third, it transitions into the darker blue, which we can see in our object behind. So you can experiment with that. You know, if you want to get um, more control over which color appears most inside of your gradient, you can do that. You can go to the drop down menu where location is uh, stored as well. And you can just click on one of the presets as well, if you wish to. It is also possible to save that gradient as well. You can go to the fill color chip in the properties panel, click in that, and it will detect we have a gradient applied. Go to the pop out menu at the top and you can choose new swatch and it will give it the imaginative name of a new gradient swatch, but we could call this sky and you can call that whatever you like to and then click OK. So that will now in the future be stored inside of your swatches panel to reapply anywhere else. One thing to note is that gradients do not remember their angle value. So if you apply this gradient somewhere else, it will forget that it was uh, set to 90 degrees. Slight downside, but that's just something to bear in mind. With that done, I'll hit the return key. I'll close down the gradient panel, switch to my selection tool and click away from the object. And then just in my sky layer in there, I'll lock the rectangle once more and then collapse the sky layer. And that's how we create gradients.